All right, so we're going to look at a couple more examples of power series. So the first one is going to be example six, uh, which is the series of um, two to the minus n x to the three n from n equals zero to infinity. So um, before we even start talking about this, and I know this is in the book, so I mean, if you were looking at the book, then that's fine. But um, I'm going to actually make this into kind of a lecture question. So this is lecture 16, question one. Describe the sequence an of coefficients. for this series. Remember, a n is the coefficient of x to the n. So just think about it, do your best, include your answer with your homework. And uh, when you unpause, I will go over this. Okay, so the sequence of coefficients a n, what the example is meant to hint at and what the book talks about too, is that a lot of people get confused and they look at this and they say, hey, okay, a n equals two to the minus n. So this is wrong. Okay, the right answer would be something like a n equals <clears throat> um, either zero if n is, uh, let's see, something like 3k plus 1 or 3k plus 2 for k in the natural numbers, right. Well, I guess, I don't know, k in the integers and k greater than or equal to zero. Uh, and then two to the minus n over three, if n is three k. Okay, so why, why did this become two to the minus n over three? Well, remember the coefficient a n a n is the coefficient of x to the n, right? So basically, a n should be, well, if a n is the coefficient of x to the n, then if we think about like, okay, what, you know, for, for some value of n, right? Okay, so what's the coefficient? Like, let's ask ourselves, like, what's the coefficient of, of, you know, x to the fifth? in this series, right? What's the coefficient of x to the fifth? Well, when n is zero, you get just one. When n is one, you get x cubed. When n is two, you get x to the sixth. And then when n is anything bigger, you get something bigger than x to the fifth. So x to the fifth never shows up. So what is the coefficient of x to the fifth? Well, it's zero, okay? Because it doesn't show up in the series. So the coefficient is zero, okay. What about, what's the coefficient of x to the sixth, right? That would be two to the minus two. The coefficient of x to the ninth, that's two to the minus three, right? And so on. So you can see if, if we're thinking of this number as n, then the coefficient of x to the n when n happens to be a multiple of three is just two to the minus one third of whatever that value of n is, right? So that's why it should be two to the minus n over, n over three. Um, it might help since we're using n over here to actually change this index in the series to a k, just because, um, you know, that way you're not getting confused between one n and the other because they're totally different concepts of n, right? Over here, 
when we ask what's the coefficient of x to the n in this entire series, even if this was written as like the sum from n equals zero to infinity of something, right? The coefficient of x to the n, if we're referring to n outside of the series, that n is like a different n from the n that's inside the series, okay? This is a general concept of like, when you have like an integral or like a, a series or anything that involves like an indexing variable like this, um, where you're like summing or integrating or whatever over all values of the indexing variable, then you can't really refer to like the indexing variable outside the scope of that series basically, right? So you couldn't write something like K times this series and expect this to make sense because K doesn't exist outside of the series, right? Anyway, so that's a sort of a separate thing, but well, there's, there's overlap here. Anyway, so, but this is, this is the sequence of coefficients, okay? This is how you describe the sequence of coefficients. So once you describe the sequence of coefficients this way, then you see that the lim sup of a n to the one over n is the lim sup of, well, it's the limit really, the limit of, um, well, I'll keep it as lim sub, it doesn't matter, of um, two to the minus n over three to the one over n, which is, you know, just two to the minus one third, right? And the reason for this is just that, you know, the lim sup looks at like the biggest subsequential limit, right? And uh, here, you know, it's not this sequence, uh, the, the sequence, the sequence a n to the one over n does not converge, right? Because some of the a n's are zero. And then, so some of these terms will be zero and the other ones will be two to the minus one third, but the limb sup is going to be two to the minus one third because that's the bigger, the bigger value, right? So r is two to the one third in this case, right? So anyway, and then, um, the, uh, the interval of convergence, maybe you can check for yourself, is actually um, negative two to the one third. Two to the one third. It's open on both sides because it's basically, it's basically like a geometric series. Um, yeah, uh, just with some terms missing. Anyway, so uh, that's that example. Uh, I just want it to be very clear that like, if there's ever ever any funny business in the uh, in the exponent of x here, you have to be really careful about what you're considering to be the coefficient a n, right? A n is not just going to be whatever expression happens to appear next to this power of x, because if the power of x is something different, then there's like a weird relationship between whatever this expression is and whatever is going on in the exponent here. So anyway, uh, last example here. So. Example seven. Uh, is going to be this is going to be a power series centered away from zero. So we're going to look at the series uh, negative one to the n plus one over n um, x minus one to the n from n equals one to infinity. Okay. So. This is a power series centered at x equals one. Okay, because if you if you set y equals x minus one, just sort of do a change of variable. Like all we've done really is just translate all the values of x over by some constant amount, right? Then this is the sum of negative one to the n plus one over n of y to the n. Uh, clearly, the um, the radius of convergence is one. Hopefully, you know, if you do enough practice with these, you'll get to the point where you can just like look at it and more or less tell, at least for simple things like this. I mean, obviously, these can get really complicated the coefficients can become, their definition can become something super complicated, so it could be hard to analyze. But with simple expressions that just involve familiar operations of like, you know, multiplication and addition, you know, polynomials and exponential functions and stuff, 
you should be able to get to the point where you can kind of look at it and tell what it's doing just by uh, kind of estimating it. So the radius is one. Um, the interval of convergence ends up being um, for y at least. Um, so in y is uh, is um, so when y is positive one, this is alternating, so it converges there. But if y is negative one, that cancels out the alternation that already exists here. So you get um, an open in an interval this way. Yeah. Uh, so then interval convergence in x is going to be, so each x value is just um, y plus one. So you just add one to all the points in this interval. So you get uh, zero, two. Uh, in reality, this series represents, sorry, represents um, log of x on 0, 2. Okay, so uh, the last thing I want to say here is um, that you can see, right, in, a, in the case of a function like log of x, uh, we found a series that converges to log of x on this, like, finite interval. But log of x is defined on the whole interval from 0 to plus infinity, right, open 0 to plus infinity. We, we sort of, at least familiarly, we consider log to be defined on that entire interval. So actually, right, the series um, negative one to the n plus one, which you may have seen before. Is not equal to log of x as a function. In fact, as a function of x, this series is the restriction of log to 0, 2, right? So remember, it's a restriction. This is not simply the function log of x. It's a different function. They happen to have the same values, but this one's only defined on this interval, whereas log we conventionally consider to be defined on the entire interval from zero to plus infinity, okay? So that's gonna be important because, I mean, you can, you can actually immediately see that that's an important fact because if you wanted to prove something about log, right, the log function, if you wanted to prove something about log, you can't just immediately replace log with this series because if you're trying to prove something about log for all values of x, then this series doesn't work. I mean, it just doesn't represent log for most of those values. So whatever might be true about this series is not necessarily true about log of x for every value of x, okay? So yeah, um, and you can notice also that like, and this is a general fact, that log, right, has a pole singularity at x equals zero, right? So the radius of convergence is limited by the distance from the center of the series to this pole, right? So in this case, the series is centered at one, right? This is the center. The series is centered at one. So since log has, if we we're tr trying to write down like various power series that represented log, we could choose where to center them, right? And then we'd end up with different coefficients. And uh, wherever we choose to center it, the radius of convergence is gonna actually end up being exactly equal to um, whatever the distance between the center we choose is and zero because there's a pole at zero, okay? That ends up being kind of a general phenomenon. 
So anyway, and of course, that's also why we can't write down a series for log of x that's centered at x equals zero. It just doesn't exist because, I mean, the function is not even defined at x equals zero. So, you know, that, that's just patently impossible. All right, anyway, so that, that's enough. That's enough for this uh, video. There's going to be one more uh, kind of short video, which is going to be a motivational kind of informal discussion of the idea of uniform convergence, which is an important tool for analyzing power series because it's going to be a way for us to figure out when power series are continuous. So anyway, that's all for this video.